Boom. We are back. We are back. We are back. <laughs> and episode 37. It's been a long time coming. This week's episode is called Marvel's Week of Madness. Uh, yeah. Is, we're, we're actually going to announce the name of the episode. Each episode now. I've decided that. One of the things I think. Uh, I talks about that. Yeah. You know. First I, I time like hearing that. of it. It's great. I love I it. Mean, I mean, I've been realizing like, I just say what episode it is. We, we don't even announce what we're talking about. People just kind of find out. Uh, and another thing I wanted to do is say what we're talking about. Uh, so this episode, we're going to be talking about four topics. One, Inside Joystick Maverick, who's going to talk about the things we've been discussing here on our end uh, with the show, with it moving forward, and how we're going to actually do it. Uh, the other side of that is we've got a segment called What If, which we're going to be talking about what if Guy Ritchie actually directed a Marvel movie. So I think that's going to be fun. Love. And then we're going to roll into the, the crazy mad things that happened in Marvel over this past week. One being Moon Knight, which was totally cucked by Star Wars Day. We'll get to that. And then, of course, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness to round it out. Uh, so, yeah. So at least you know right away what segments you want. Whether to you want to stick around or not. <laughs> yeah. Um, which you should always stick around. Yes. I do think that it's it's something we can kind of lead right into with Inside Joystick Maverick. We've we've had a year of episodes under our belt. Um, we had a nice little like anniversary like episode, and then we took a, took a hiatus. We uh, we needed a break. I think I I did. I know you did, Dom. Um, and I think it just it allowed us to kind of take measure of what we have accomplished, what was working, what wasn't. I think three hour episodes are for the birds. Nobody's going to listen to that, and so we're aware of that. We're all thirty three <laughs> years old. I don't got three yeah. hours. Seriously. The, the other piece is like, again, it was a mystery, right? What are we going to talk about? Like every episode, I, granted, it's in the show notes, but nobody reads those. I don't even read those. And I write them. Uh, so, I mean, just a list of things that we're going to ramble on about. It's much, much smaller. So each Not to take away from Mike Mahaffey's word. Oh, yeah. Show notes. Like oh. he fucking kills it every time. I really hope he didn't take offense to that. I, definitely, <laughs> I, I need those notes and those pronunciations, as we all know. Yeah. Uh, but, but now the goal is to try to focus on a smaller group of topics and not just like read the headlines. I think that was something I, I thought was going to be helpful or like kind of interesting, but I think it just chewed up more time and took away from really the energy we had by the time we got to the final round. Yeah. So now that we truncate that, we make that the segment a little bit smaller. We'll we'll be able to actually get rid of the headlines. We'll be able to get past no more in memoriams. Fuck that. You can read about that on Twitter. Uh, and we're just going to go straight into the fun stuff. Sound good? I think it's awesome. Bad I ass. fucks with it. <laughs> awesome. So that's there you go. Number one done. See how fast. Yeah. We're I mean, we this took a great. break. We had a lot of shit going on in our lives. I quit Speaking my day which, job. Yeah, a friend yes. died. It's been a rough couple of weeks. Yeah, we uh, a friend of the show died. We had you know, you you quit your job, which by the way to me is a victory. I, I I'm going to publicly say, fuck that job. It doesn't feel like a victory yet. I'm sure. I mean, I'm still there <laughs> until the end of May, but like I, we'll see. You don't feel a little bit good going from the pan into the fire. I mean, that I feel bit a little feeling better of after escape. this week. Depending okay. on what happens this week, there but yeah, go. um, I actually got a, an offer accepted on a house. Granted, it doesn't mean shit. That's I got actually close on it. Market. That's enormous. Yeah, yeah, dude. So I'm really excited about that. So hopefully, what that'll do is provide me not a gym slash playroom slash library slash pantry to do the show from, um, in a new place over the next couple of weeks, um, and just hopefully create a better show so yeah yeah i'm definitely feeling rested i needed the show i missed the show i me like too. It. it it forces me to read stuff speaking of things this is not even this is already off topic <laughs> already i'm already off the rails let's just talk bro i i read the the lives and deaths of, of wolverine great series run okay um, yeah I read the death of Doctor Strange. Heard that was awesome. Thank God I did that before seeing the movie. Yeah, because uh, that actually told me about a character I had no idea actually existed. Um, and then I started getting into the Eternals run. It's kind. It's a. It's a. Chewy it's a little run. dry. It's Which one? Chewy. Are you talking about Neil Gaiman's? Like the uh, one from a couple years back? No, the latest the one, one right now. The new one. That it's leads so to like chewy. Eternals versus X Men, right? Really. I think there's an Eternals versus the Marvel the Marvel Universe coming up, where it's because, like it, they I did hope that so. whole Avengers versus X Men thing, 
like while we were working at the fruit stand. Yes. And um, I think they're doing another like big like crossover event of uh, Eternals fighting the rest of the Marvel Universe. But I'm not 100% sure. I think that is, though. Well, I, I really I honestly hope there's some payoff here. Um, I, I actually am really thankful for the movie. Well, the movie wasn't really the biggest thing for me. Uh, you know, it, it was great for some and, and big for many. But like to me, if it didn't really hit the way I thought I was going to. Uh, my problem is I'm always going to be having this expectation of Avengers Endgame. And every subsequent like I think we have a lot to say about yeah. Like sucked, I have a lot right? to say about that when we get to our last topic because I agree with you a hundred percent that I'm trying to live everything up to Endgame and nothing's gonna live that up because we had twelve years of fucking build up yeah. before that movie came out. So. Yeah, I mean, I I I have no connection with with the Eternals, whereas I had a connection sitting in in a college library, fist bumping in the air, seeing that. You know, Robert Downey Jr. was going to play Iron Man and people not really getting why. I'm like, it's a it's a drug addict who who flies in a metal suit <laughs> and it's Robert, Downey, made Jr. For Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Christ, he has a he has a redemption story in real life. Yeah, but I, I don't really have any of that with these actors. And granted, I've seen them a lot of British TV, but I digress. Um, so having said that, British TV, British movies. Guy Ritchie this is a pretty good segue. Yeah, Guy Ritchie. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm working on him. I'm a little rusty. It's been about a month and some change. So yeah. Um, but no, it, it's it actually came up right before the show. It's a new, it's the only reason it's even popped up in here is because uh, Mahaffey actually messaged you, Dom. Or excuse me, was he? Yeah, let me make sure I'm being honest here. I'll kick that off. Yeah, Mahaffey. I love Guy Ritchie movies. You were saying you need to watch the gentleman. And you also love Guy Ritchie movies. I too am a huge Guy Ritchie fan. Ever since Snatch was my Snatch. first introduction, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Watch Dog, Two Smoking Barrels. Also had a Jason Statham in it. A young Rock and Rolla. Oh, Rock like, and Rolla. Rock and Rolla with uh, Dur- uh, first time I ever saw Tom Hardy in a movie. Really? A, yeah, a gay Tom Hardy. Rolla. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He was um, shit. I can't remember his name. I know who he is though. But he's the he's the one that they think he's gay. Yeah, and he's actually think, gay. <laughs> he's, he's like, yeah, he's he's gay. He's like, you know what? He's like, hey, and I love that Bob, handsome, handsome Bob. Bob. I think I think it's I think you're right. I think it's handsome Bob. But like, I love that whole scene in the car where it's Gerard Butler, great, Idris Elba, great, and they're talking about uh, handsome Bob and how like, you know, he took 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 care of your mother while you were in jail, and you know. If I if I had to if he asked me if you know if he could blow me I I I'd, I'd have to pause like just because they love him so much like he he'd do it just just because he loves them he had to think about it but uh, instead of outright no which which is ridiculous and then that's when somebody reveals the rest of the plot of that movie and it's like it's a pseudonym you idiot and he's like how do you know a word like pseudonym I can't believe I pulled handsome Bob out of my ass I haven't seen that movie in fucking years I love that movie so much. I mean, who doesn't love Tom Hardy, right? Even who skinny Tom Hardy, Hardy from Star Trek. Like, oh yeah, he's so good in that. He's, I, I kind of, at oh, first God, when so I saw him, Star Trek, Star Trek Nemesis, right? Tom Hardy. Yeah, yeah real skinny. You hear? He about, was in Band of Brothers too. He was like on like drugs, drugs when he did Star Trek Nemesis. He talks about it, like he was just coked out really? of his mind the whole time he was doing that. Well, I mean, he looked this. I think it was around the same time. He looked, God, just disheveled in in Band of Brothers. He was yeah. like a, played a young and then went into uh, Bronze, yeah. where he's fucking jacked. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right before Bane, just right all before the time frame. Bane. Insane. You know, uh, Guy Ritchie directed Aladdin, the new Aladdin, with Will Smith. I had no what? idea that that was Guy Ritchie. I'm sorry. I, I looked I'm, it up. I had no yeah. idea. Like I have IMDb up for everything else we're talking about tonight, except for Guy Ritchie, and now I feel like this is a huge fucking mistake. Like, he what did, are some of the other ones you didn't know? Lockstock, Snatch, Rock and Roll Up, King Arthur: Legend of the Sword, which I heard was pretty good. It is pretty good. I, I don't know. The Man from Uncle. That was good. The that Gentleman, and then Aladdin. Like, I mean, he did Aladdin. And then the Sherlock Holmes Aladdin movies. Too. Um, Sherlock Holmes, obviously Sherlock Holmes. Um, I mean, Wrath yeah. of Man was fun. Um, he, 
Beats by Dre made Defiant the mixtape? I don't know. What? I heard that That's Gentleman it. was dope. Mike said he was watching it recently. Or he said he was watching it now, I think. Before we so, started the show. What I didn't realize is there is they're making the gentleman a TV series as well, and he's directing those. Oh, it's really? In, it's in pre-production. I'm seeing episodes one and two. He's doing that. Uh, yeah, I do. I did like the gentleman. I will say that every moment that an older actor gets to like really make new age punks feel like babies is hilarious to me. Like, I saw the one Charlie Hunnam clip for it. Did you see the one like with in the Colin fucking, Farrell? Just getting a yeah, sandwich. where they're in the where they're in the, like the the like the pizza shop, shop or some shit. Yeah, those two scenes. Yeah, fantastic. yeah, I've seen those two scenes, and I'm like, man, I'm in. <laughs> and then I saw one recently with with my, Matthew McConaughey. I'm like, man, this oh, yeah. fucking movie's sick. But nothing beats like Snatch, Lock, oh, Stock, yeah. and Rock and Roll. I mean, Snatch. I mean, we quoted that movie for fucking years. Yeah. Anytime it's the only reason I know what a something. desert eagle is. <laughs> it was <laughs> you lost gorgeous George. <laughs> <laughs> He's not exactly a pair of fucking car keys, now is he? Yeah. Was <laughs> it? I love that. I honestly, my favorite line from that whole movie is when he, uh, he's he's talking and he's like, do you know what the word nemesis means? Oh, and yes. he defines nemesis. He's like, or an honorable <laughs> cunt like me. <laughs> like me. <laughs> so good. I think the one I, I quote probably the most is, is when somebody says something ridiculous and I and I say, in the quiet words of the Virgin Mary, come again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> come again. So good. <laughs> so I had to good. rewatch that recently. I need to rewatch this. I might just go on a Guy Ritchie binge this week and start you watching know, all this it. shit. But speaking of, so now that we know kind of, you know, his who movies, he is, right? They're usually like <laughs> crime based or there's multiple parts of a story that culminate in all of the key players ending up most of the time in the same room not in the way you expect them to and everybody gets their pants pulled down basically and all your secrets are revealed uh what marvel heroes or anti-heroes or, or shoot even just something with a bunch of villains would you personally like to see so the obvious choice to me for guy Ritchie is deadpool um for me like that makes the most sense there's a lot of fourth wall breaking in Deadpool. Um, there's a lot of like jokes, like toilet humor and all that stuff. However, I will say after watching Moon Knight this last couple, like six weeks, yeah, Guy Ritchie could do a fucking phenomenal Moon Knight with the jump cuts that he does in all of his movies yeah. and the jump cuts between Mark Spector and Steven. And you're like, man. That would be he would do a really good job. I mean, I think a a Guy Ritchie Moon Knight project would be sick. A Guy Ritchie Daredevil project would be sick. It's gotta be somebody grounded. You know what I'm saying? Like it's not gonna yeah. be your Captain America's, your yeah, Iron no. Man's, like even though he directed Robert Downey Jr. and Sherlock Holmes. Like it's not gonna be those guys, but it's gonna be like your your defenders. Your Midnight Suns. I know that's what, yeah. I mean, that, yeah, I told you earlier, Midnight Suns. And the only reason I think that would work really well is if you took the angle of, you know, the ground level of those heroes. Like, like Blade is among them. And any Blade movie, there's always like over dramatic jumps and flips. And like, if all of a sudden Blade is just like an annoyed vampire because he's just trying to like solve whatever problem and him and just that actor. Being irritated, yeah, yeah, just being irritated so and just like over everybody because they're so slow, and then just not wanting to deal with fucking Mark or Stephen Grant, like just being over it. And then finally, also, Jake, thinking, Jake shows up. He's he at least likes him or something like that. I yeah. love that angle. X Force could be a good one. <laughs> like it's like the B Team X Men. But like the angry ones, like all the angry yeah. X Men go and start X Force. Honestly, or Guy like Ritchie that. could do a fucking bang up Suicide Squad if we're talking DC. Yeah. I mean, Ooh. the Suicide Squad's built for a Guy Ritchie movie. And essentially, the first movie, if you look at it kind of holistically, and I know this is kind of treason to say, <laughs> kind of runs like a Guy Ritchie movie. With right. All the I mean, cuts and the exactly. the like one liners and the cracks and all that stuff. 
it's just not really well put together. Like poor, it's a poor man's Guy Ritchie movie. <laughs> poor poor David Ayer. What up, Mahaffey? Watching on Twitch today. Ooh, it can't be that platforms. good. The Ayer cut can't be as good as David Ayer thinks it is. I don't think it exists. I think they burned it. I think they were like, mm, can't do it now because it's gone. Now, don't get me wrong. Everybody hates Jared Leto. I would love to see Jared Leto reprise the Joker just because I loved what he did for the 35 seconds of screen time that he had in the Snyder Cut. See, that's that's the, the hard part for me is like, how, how long do we fucking have to wait to get from weirdo tattoos and teeth grill shit to that? Version? I killed Robin and fucking with your head. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, like, like he, I mean, trash in a bar, fuck, fucking who cares? Yeah. Trashing Batman and destroying one of the Robins. I want that version immediately. Yeah. So, but no, I, I have to agree, man. It's, there's so, it's just, Guy dude, Ritchie should direct the top tracksuit mafia film. Fuck, Guy Ritchie could have done the damn Matt Fraction Hawkeye book probably pretty <laughs> well too. Damn. <Yeah. laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, you're actually the tracksuit mafia, that, that, them having their own show. That's just yeah, Mike I think would be that, entertaining that, as shit. That was yeah. really good. That's a good shout out. Thanks, Mike Mahaffey on Twitch today. Um, man, yeah, you're right though. It's got to be angsty. It's got to be ground level. It can't be celestial or anything like that. It's got to be. I mean, he could do the Guardians of the Galaxy. The I mean, that that could like if you made a Guardians of the Galaxy movie like a Guy Ritchie movie, I think you could do that as well. It's just hard to replace James Gunn, and it's interesting that I said two James Gunn movies. <laughs> that he could do because they're both very similar when there it comes to the directing style. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. And and, and, uh, and it makes me think of uh, Edgar Wright in the same vein too. Edgar Wright also, jumps. yeah. But uh, but no. See, Anybody who can direct Simon Pegg and Nick Frost the way Edgar Wright does is good in my book. I can't believe they just never killed him. Like I, the interview I saw was after uh, was that third in the Cornetto trilogy. This the, is the end. Uh, World's no, End. The World's End. That's it. They, they were <laughs> Nick Frost was just over it. He was over Edgar's shit. He's like, we were we d- didn't think we were gonna come back and do it because he's so particular. We did, yeah. like, did we did that bar fight scene like thirty seven times. <laughs> like, yeah, screw that. He's like, it was two days just to get that one right. choreographed dance sequence and hip just perfect. Which, granted, it paid off because it was a great scene. Um, but now that we kind of touched base on it a little bit, Moon Knight. So Moon Knight. <laughs> I, I will say it all day, every day. We, we actually had our last episode, and then Moon Knight's first episode came out, and we were thinking about coming back from episode 37, and that was going to be with the first episode. But thankfully, I'm glad we got to the end. Yeah. I really want to focus on it and talk about it. Um, episode one of Moon Knight kind of starts us off, which, it was, which is called the, the Goldfish Problem. Actually, let me back this up. Let's, let's go. Let's go one, one step further back. Moon Knight. Easy synopsis. Radio. Yeah. Stephen Grant and mercenary Mark Spector investigate the mysteries of the Egyptian gods from inside the same body. Pretty straightforward. Uh, but when you're actually introduced to the show, what I like is that it's all from the view of Stephen Grant, who is not. Yeah. We don't know at this point in the beginning. Oh, let me go ahead and throw this up there. New banner alert. Spoiler alert. Here we go. We're about to go into some spoilers for the entire season of Moon Knight. If you have not seen it, this is your warning. Three, two, one. Yeah, so it be, we get this point of view from, from Stephen Grant, who's a seemingly kind of meek uh, gift shop attendee who ends up being a superhero, and but also maybe sharing a body with a merc- ruthless mercenary. Uh, and Mark Spector, and we're kind of led to believe that he is the person who is the host of that body and not the alternate. And I love that because, you know, if you're a comic book fan, you already know that Mark Spector is, is the host and that Stephen Grant is an alter. Uh, but what, you know, if you're new to it and you haven't read the comics or anything like that, you kind of get introduced to it a little slower than right, than, than right away. You get these jumps of him holding a gun or, and people just falling dead out of trucks. He's jumping from London to different, like different cities and stuff like that. Uh, and just being put in these really awkward situations uh, that to me set the tone for like the entry for your average fan, right? In the first episode. I, the first episode 
I really liked because it was just it, I don't know much about Moon. I didn't know much about Moon Knight going into it. Um, I knew that Moon Knight was Mark Spector. And then to start the show off with Stephen Grant, you're like, who the fuck is this? But like hats off to Oscar Isaac, who's not British, but you couldn't tell based off that accent. Like nails the accent, nails the the Mark Spector accent. I mean, the guys, the guys, he grew up in Miami. Um, and his parents are Hispanic, and he, is he, as he defines himself, Hollywood has said that he is racially ambiguous. No, he said he's from um, <clears throat> uh, he's from Guatemala. His family's from Guatemala. Yeah, that that's what he put in his uh, opening monologue for SNL. Is like when you get a person who's Guatemalan and half or parts Cuban, whatever else. That's yeah. it. Cuban and Guatemalan. You get what Hollywood calls racially ambiguous, right? So you can fit in every role, which and he plays a Jewish hurt. man in this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I so mean, yeah. Mark Spector is Jewish. We get a Stephen Grant who is British. So you get those people in. Uh, and then spoilers much, much further ahead. There's a potential third alternate, uh, Jake Lockley, who is Hispanic basically. Like he's, he's just a Hispanic. Hispanic. He's a cab driver in New York. Yeah, it's wonderful. Um, just all those different people getting put out there. And then the other person we get who becomes a superhero played by May Columway. Did I get it? I think so. Character Layla El Fauli. She becomes the first Egyptian superhero, right? Like, yeah. Golden Scarab. She, I think Gold Scarab is what her name is. Gold Scarab. Or I heard it was Scarlet Scarab. Scarlet Scarab. Something I think that, Scarab. that evidently that character, Scarlet Scarab, is actually a real character in the comics. But it was a dude, uh, just same name, really kind of similar powers, but it really, really drastically different origin stories uh, with uh, we'll go over here in a little bit. But um, the other person I thought was had a great entrance with e was Ethan Hawke's character. Uh, was it Mark Harrow, Harrow Arthur Harrow, yeah. Arthur, so Harrow. Arthur, Arthur Harrow in the in the comic was a, kind of a throwaway character. Evidently, he was just, <laughs> just an evil Nazi. Yeah. Uh, clearly a much different character in this. He is a disciple of Amit, the goddess of just judgment. Basically, she will weigh your scales of life. And if you're good, at the end of the day, you live. If you're bad, you're, you're done. She doesn't yeah. give you the chance to commit the evil, which taking away free will, not really great in most uh, literary sources. So I think that was going to always have a conflict there. Whereas Kang Shu, who is uh, the god who... A, basically creates Moon Knight, gives uh, Mark Spector the opportunity to be his avatar on Earth. He at least allows you the chance to fuck shit up before you get his judgment mm -hmm. through Moon Knight. Um, that leads into episode two a little bit with we get, this, it's called Summon the Suit. This is actually my fun episode because you first get to see Mr. Knight, which is uh, I thought was a neat treatment for any kind of character in general, but the personality of the person instructs what the suit should look like. Yeah. Right? So Mark Spector gets this kind of epic cape thing with a cowl and all that, whereas <laughs> Stephen Grant gets a, a nice suit, which the, the textures on that suit alone, looks somebody incredible. was paying attention. It looks amazing. Yeah. And then you get a full on mask, the glowy eyes. The, gl the eyes don't look ridiculous either. Like, I thought they would right. be kind of funky, you know, glowing eyes, but like they actually kind of they kind of played. They still have voted, yeah. you know. I think they were good. Well, yeah. Um, and, and the actual movements from uh, Oscar Isaacs really helped sell it as well. Him being able to maneuver and and really exaggerate his movements because you can't see his mouth. The money is hidden behind the mask, so you got to really kind of get after it. And even just like the, the jolly, like I just hit you in the face. Yeah, it was awesome. Uh, and, and this episode was, was pretty freaking fantastic. Um, overall, I think the it st starts really kind of taking off really towards the end of episode three. Episode three felt like a filler episode. It's called The yep. Friendly Type. Um, synopsis is this. This is where Mark in the forefront and Harrow ahead. Uh, Mark and Layla navigate Cairo for intel. So uh, Harrow is now on his way to the, the grave of 
Amit, Amit. and he's going to release her and become hopefully become her avatar. Um, and he's got this 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 scarab that, it, that everybody's been after for their, these three episodes. I'm definitely jumping around, but you know that's what I get. Uh, we're we're doing a new format. I'll get better. But okay. uh, but I I like that in this episode we get to learn more about Layla. Right, we get to learn her her past her the her dad's death. Uh, there's a connection to the black market and the underground. Uh, she's got history in Cairo. Uh, we were given the opportunity to begin setting up for uh, a, a character played by uh, Uliel, 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 Gaspard Uliel, who is Anton Mogart. Anton Mogart becomes what avatar later on? I can't remember, but he does become one. Right. So he becomes kind of a pivotal character in the Moon Knight, like a arc and unfortunately that actor died as we know skiing a very european death we as we said many, many unfortunately many in yeah, ago. Of people. yeah um so eh, that, that again it was a filler episode it was very much like hey here's a bunch of information about the, the mythos of the world they got to try to find some sarcophagus that has some star maps and blah yep. blah blah and it was just kind of filling out their universe i think um Somebody made a comparison online to all the episode fours of all of these um, Marvel Disney Plus series, and episode four has been where, like the pivotal kinda, moment. Yeah, yeah, we get like a real crest, and everybody's like fist punching the air, or there's a big reveal that you know sets the tone for the last two episodes. Um, and I, I definitely think episode four, the tomb, is where that hits. Uh, episode four, we, at the end of episode C, we actually see the, episode three. We see um, Stephen Grant is, is actually running the body, and he's actually using his knowledge uh, of, of the star maps and all that to to read ancient Egyptian and to actually figure out uh, where this tomb is based off of something they find in a sarcophagus unfortunately <laughs> what steven realizes is that you can't do anything about that because when it was made the stars have moved it's been several thousands of years um and oh well, well we can't really figure that out and then who shows up but Con Conchu, who gives him the play voiced by no one other than F. Murray Abraham. F. Murray Abraham. That's it. I couldn't remember his, his middle name, I guess. What, is, what do you think F stands for, Frank? Jerry. F. Murray Abraham <laughs> stands for Jerry. <laughs> F. Jerry. <laughs> um, but yeah, so he actually, for those of you who have to watch Mythic Quest, he plays C.W. Longbottom, the old, a little bit more dashing kind of writer who's a little bit too raunchy for his own good because he's, he's just like the dirty old man yeah uh kong shu is just a dirty old murderer uh wants people to die for their evil um but in this episode he lets steven control the night sky and roll back time so they can use this magical laptop or tablet that has the ability to read the star maps and immediately tell them pinpoint accuracy of where they got to go for this tomb that that part's a little fuzzy wuzzy movie magic for me but you know i guess <laughs> it is several years in the future in the marvel universe now it's not even 2022 it's like 2026 or something like that so we'll just say that we jump pretty fast in four years um but that causes kanshu to be judged by his fellow gods and those the fellow gods and their avatars imprison him in stone which loses uh, Moon Knight's powers, and unfortunately, that just makes Mark Spector and Stephen Grant normal crazy people. Yep. Womp womp. Um, next, rolling into episode four, this is the crescendo. I think they they know where the tomb is now. They're going to try to catch up to Har Harrow and the goons, and they it's Layla and and Mark. I'm just going to call him Mark from here on out. It's a good idea. <laughs> yeah, since he is the primary. Uh, Layla and Mark, they skedaddle, they they find the, the tomb, and they catch up to Harrow, and there's just nothing but carnage at the dig site. Everybody's dead. Uh, they're getting into the tomb and realizing mm -hmm. that the tomb is shaped like the Eye of Ra. Uh, and there's a little bit of, like, I don't know, history and nonsense that they go into explaining, oh, that's that's what this is supposed to be. This is what this part of the uh, Ra represents, and this is probably the way to go. 
um, and they basically walk into a mummification chamber that's been freshly used. Uh, so now everybody's interest should be piqued as we start to hear horrifying screeching. <laughs> uh, and as they hide, this gruesome looking mummy shows up, which was great makeup. I mean, that thing very much so terrifying. Uh, it, of course, reminded me of my favorite uh, mummy movie, The Mummy, <laughs> and all those mummies oh, that were in there. Frazier. Yeah, it would have been great if it was just Brendan Fraser coming around the corner and getting <laughs> murdered by a mummy. It's just, ah. Um, but I digress. So, long story short, they end up actually finding the tomb, and lo and behold, everything in the tomb points to this isn't an Egyptian tomb. This is uh, oh, what it was Macedonian. Macedonian, look at you, bro. This is, I love you. Macedonian tomb, and it's Alexander the Great, who evidently was a previous avatar of Amit. It's, and he plays Midnight Man. Thank you, Mahaffey. That's who that guy plays, Midnight yeah, Man. Yeah, really well. Midnight Man. How would I not remember that from the Night Man, Midnight Man by Charlie Day? Uh, Day Man. Um, but no, anyway, so we, they find out it's Alexander the Great. Uh, and after digging inside of the corpse of Alexander the Great, they find Amit's tiny stone imprisonment. And just in time for all the bad guys to show up and kill Mark Spector. Pew, pew, pew. You're done. And as he slowly falls into what's water on the floor randomly in this, in this tomb. Nothing but sand around it forever. Yep. Water is a bunch out. of water, and it was clean as shit water too. Not a not a not an ounce of soot, no sediment. <laughs> and uh, he falls into it, which slowly looks like he falls into this, I guess, portal to hell, if you will. And he wakes up in his psych ward, and that's when everybody starts going, "Huh?" Yeah. And he's <laughs> Mark Spector's a little out of it. All, you start to see all these different uh, people in the psych ward, a lot of familiar faces. Uh, the actress that plays Layla is there as a, a fellow patient who is totally dicking Mark over because uh, he just won some bingo, but she's going to take the prize for it. She swears she'll share it this time, but she won't. Um, and even like the other people in the psych ward, you start to, I didn't realize this at the time, but thankfully there are plenty of sleuths on TikTok to point out that like, yeah, the street they're all man, people. Or, yeah. And, yeah. Everybody he's talking, even like the boss at the gift shop is there. Um, so like things like that was, was really great little nods. Um, and Steven falls over, has a little episode and gets to meet his doctor, AKA Arthur Harrow, AKA Ethan Hawke. And that's where we're left to try to think, is this real? Is is he actually crazy in, in the psych ward crazy? And then lo and behold, he's not. <laughs> right? Episode five, The Asylum. This is where this things kind of... probably the best episode, I would say, of the show. Um, yeah, I, like I would love to hear your digest of this. I feel like I've just been taking up all the all the time here. I'm sorry, buddy. No, 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 no. Um, I think that the best I love this part of the show because it's it's backstory for Mark Spector and why he is the way that he is. Um he meets the hippopotamus at the end of episode four. I can't remember the name of the hippopotamus, but Tarawet. Uh Tarawet, yeah. And Tarawet is um ferrying the dead to the field of reeds, um, in Egyptian um Egyptian mythology. And during that, you have the, the, the scales, the weighing of the hearts against the feather. And his scales are out of balance because he has multiple personalities inside of him. So he spends the whole episode trying to get the scales in balance. And through that, you kind of see why Mark Spector is the way that he is. Yeah, I love um, that they use the, the boat that's being, that they're being ferried on. And it's basically like his life so as yeah. they run through the different hallways they find different doors and each door leads to a different memory which is great for these two personalities because they don't remember each other's side so they get to walk through their other half's door and, and witness that memory and mm -hmm. kind of have an understanding of a why stephen grant was created in the first place yeah uh, we get to see how he was created based off of a tv show that i guess mark specter watches a kid 
with the great Stephen Grant's Discovering Adventure. It made me think of, oh man, I can't tell you his flipping name. The guy who's in Jumanji as like the, welcome to Jumanji. Uh, just in, um, he's in the, the Five Means Death show it's on HBO Max. He is the New Zealand redhead face guy. I mean, if you just, yeah, I don't know. In like 25 minutes, if he's going to have it on, on chat, and I'll be like, that guy. Um, but anyways, he's he's Stephen Grant, and that's the, the name of the Explorer, and that's where this kind of personality comes from. Is this very like smart, uh, confident person who is very nice and kind, and that's what we get Stephen Grant from. He gets to be the nice one to Mummy, who is evidently the this crazy abusive m- – Reese Darby, thank you, Mike. Reese Darby. Um, but but long story short, uh, Mark Spector actually loses his brother on accident. Allegedly, um, have you allegedly. read that it's a ale- that it's very possible that Kanchu orchestrated the whole thing and he killed Mark Spector's brother? No. Yeah, but like, I would that's love like a that. huge thing, like because there's like allusions to it because he steps on the bird, the skeleton of the bird. <sighs> Yeah, I mean, there's like this whole illusion that Kanchu wanted Mark for his avatar from the beginning and orchestrated oh, all the events to break Mark's mind, to fracture his mind, so that he gets his brother. That's pretty fantastic. Yeah, that'd be pretty... Yeah. I mean, it makes sense. So, I mean, it is the death of his brother and then the continued abuse by his mom that ensues for years. Yeah, that's that causes... not easy to watch. No, dude, that shit was tough. That was so tough. Yeah, and how he creates a fucking alternate personality as a coping mechanism. Yeah, and so that coping mechanism being Stephen Grant is the one who basically is the kind, uh, just please mommy so she's no longer you know a jerk to me for however longer. And that gets to shield Mark Spector. And then what we kind of realize later on is that the that, that same moment we kind of get a Jake Lockley creation. The one to deal and take the abuse not to be nice about it, but to just endure the pain and then take that pain. In Mark the books, in the Mark's book, brother yeah, doesn't die good. and becomes a villain. Oh, surprise. Sean also oh, says, it rem- um, I'm guessing the first part of when he was, what we were talking about is it reminds him of Ewan McGregor in Train Spotting, which makes sense. Uh, and of course, my heavy also pointed out that Brad Pitt and Snatch, when he gets knocked, he hits the mat, he just falls into water. That is fantastic. I, it's yeah i mean it's i i feel like having never been knocked out yet i don't plan on it it's not fun that is probably what it would feel like maybe oh. uh being being submerged and having no control over it um but yeah so to your point though this episode was a, a great just because we had so much character building with with mark and with steven and then of course jake lockley uh who we saw we can assume in a sar- dark darker looking sarcophagus not being let out uh, and we actually get a little bit of a tickle uh, of Jake Lockley and believe in, in this final episode, of the beginning of the end of, of number five, where uh, he's got a piece of tape across his nose. From yeah. Look like a bandage, you know, very similar to what you'd see, like a boxing bandage. And I love that we get that little bit of a nod of like, that's the fighter in the group. Right. And his yep. accent changes a little bit. It's more. It's a little New York. It's very New, New York. York. New York. Yeah, very heavy New York. Maybe we. What if we don't like that? You know, that, what if we don't like what you think? Kind of thing. And I just it felt very like Robert De Niro in a way, yeah. like just coming Raging out. Bull, and, taxi driver. Yeah. yeah. Very much. I'm sure yeah. that's what. Yeah. It's, it's anyway, got to be an exact copy. He's like, I'm just gonna do that. <laughs> um, but yeah, I love that little that little peek that we're. We start to realize, like, okay, each time Stephen was starting to wake up, and there's he's surrounded by dead bodies. Mark was having those same moments, right? And we're starting to realize that all all the murdering is not by either of them. Nope. It's all Jake Lockley. Uh, when he pops up, things lose their life. Um, and and you're right. It's it's at the end of this episode that we see, you know, the culmination of what it what it really means for 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 Mark and Stephen to kind of see the other side of the story, to have the understanding, to build that bond of trust over those shared experiences, and 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 realizing why the other one needed 
why they needed each other really. Yeah. Uh, and we have Stephen who sacrifices himself to save Mark freezes in the sands on the way to uh, the field of reeds and Mark has his heart balanced and he gets to go into the field of reeds in the heaven. And we end on that episode. Very gladiator. Yeah. I with the hand on the, the, yeah. I mean, I had the same level of like, I am not happy right now. This, it ended, but I'm not pleased with it. It's like, super, you know, Mike heavy. and I talked about this pretty, pretty regularly. Those Marvel shows have a lot to clear up by the end of the episode. Like, th <laughs> there's a whole plot to this show that you spent five episodes building to that the last two episodes, four and five, do nothing to move forward. Like, it really, the whole plot of Harrow wakening Ahmet. And then, like, the rest of the Aeneid showing up and, like, banishing Khonshu. Like, you do that at the beginning, at the end of episode three. You spend all of episode four and five, like, kind of dealing with that. Like, dealing yeah. with, like, Mark Spector's death and all that stuff. And then, like, you got a whole shit. You got a whole fucking show to wrap up in one episode. It's the shortest finale in. in yeah, it was short. It, it was, was 48 was, minutes. It was the shortest finale in all of the Marvel shows, and they fucking stuck the landing. I don't understand it. I mean, like, <laughs> I think it plays off of the fact that it's a person's broken mind, so you're okay with a little bit of a broken up story. Yeah, that's true. I you think know? you're absolutely right about that. I think it, I think we've been put into a comfortable place of like disjointedness, whereas this next topic we're talking about, and it's disjointedness, did not work for many people, but Namely I hope one person on this show. But we'll get to <laughs> you're not alone, man. You're not alone. A lot of a lot of the big tweeters were, were tweeters. Um, but no, I do the, the, let's circle it all up. So last episode, um, yeah, we're, you're right. We get to undo all the shit that happened in episode three. We get to bust out Conchu. Thank you, uh, Layla, for doing that. Conchu's like, be my avatar. And she's like, go fuck yourself, bro. Pretty much. Uh, yeah. You, like, <laughs> you, you've ruined Mark's life. You ain't gonna ruin my life. And she's like, think of another way, dude. And he's like, oh, bitch. And he goes off to to uh, basically fight Amit one on one, which Amit looked awesome. I don't know how you can make. Bro, like, how's the CG in this show better than fucking Dr. Strange's Multiverse of Madness? I know. Well, is what's funny is I like the CG in this show, and I got a lot of. I actually had one buddy, one person, like pointed out several tweets and several people online, and was just sharing with me like, "See, this person didn't like the CG in this spot. They didn't like the CG." I'm like, "Well, to be fair, I was watching every single episode like before 10 a.m. Whenever I would have time for a shower, like on a little stand. So CG at this big looks amazing, right? So didn't affect me at all. But I just didn't want to have spoilers. <laughs> yeah." I wanted to be able to get on Twitter for the day or or any social media and not be like, <sighs> don't even get me fucking started about Twitter. <laughs> yeah. But I think, you know, I think it was definitely a, a, a great, a awesome fight scene between Amit and Kangshu. I love just the treatment of those gods and Kangshu being like em emaciated as a, a, a guy, the out, an outcast God with that, just the, the skull yeah. for, for a face. Awesome. Amit being an elegant alligator woman fucking dope and you get like a kaiju battle yeah you get a huge There's so much shit that happens in that last episode and then simultaneously we're getting a mirrored fight between uh mark specter and and arthur harrow who are just going toe to toe and kicking each other's ass <laughs> motherfucking kaiju battle he's absolutely right that's what i'm saying that shit was hype dude let me tell you it was i love the whole wow. i love the whole show i mean i i like Which, what was your What's favorite part of the show? The, my favorite part of the show was episode five. The whole, like, you get the background of Mark Spector, the whole, like, emotional side of it. I, suffering from, you know, bipolar disorder through my, you know, recently diagnosed in the last five years, suffering through bipolar disorder, know what it's like to kind of feel in, like, you're not in control of your head the whole time. Yeah. Like, where your kind of emotions are driving you towards something else that you're not wholly cognizant of um i really loved how they handled it there um you i mean hats off to ask oscar isaac i mean between him and pedro pascal right now like <laughs> the latin force is in full effect you know what i'm saying <laughs> i put them in I, everything 
let them, you know, you know, do that. Mike Mahaffey and I were talking about like where Pedro Pascal could like like fall into the MCU. And we'll talk about it when we're talking about multiverse of madness, because it's one specific character. Um, and I was like, Yeah, absolutely. And then like it, yeah, so I mean the I really liked this show. Um <laughs> Mike said I love Hippo God, and if Gore kills her, I'm out. I bet I, the whole Egyptian Inead gets wiped out. Like I told uh, I told the Mike God I was like about to fuck everybody up. Like I Russell Crowe, Zeus is do- dead. Like all of them are dead. I think Tarawa is gonna be the first maybe the first one to go that we know of. Like the one yeah. the character we might see. And I say that only because she was adorable and was there to just ready to help. And her her, her like stance on I've got a great costume for us. And <laughs> That big later great. reveal with the wings and fucking sword shit it was very like Loki throwing out swords in, into her hands kind of thing. Like I love that reveal, but I mean that's definitely gonna be like it's got to that first death has got to set the tone. Now, granted, we've already seen one of the uh, Thor: Love and Thunder. We haven't even talked about that. We'll we've talk seen about one between of the, this and Multiverse of Madness because we yeah there we go we should we talk go. about it for sure. Yeah, it's, it was it's a minute more, and thirty five seconds of the trailer. Well, so we'll uh we'll wrap this we'll wrap this last episode up um the, the battle ensues good wins at the end of the day they re they re-put amit back inside of a container not a stone one but a human yeah. one they imprisoned her inside arthur harrow and Conchu is like you have to kill them and that this is the only way they'll she'll get out again like you don't get it and mark's like fuck you i'm free i'm not doing that shit Maybe. Well, like, be. Is he free? But he ain't. Because he ain't free. He ain't free. Because guess what? It only took one personality to accept Conchu for the other ones to have the power to. So right. you're going to have to have everybody agree, I think, for him to get the boot. And Jake Lockley ain't saying shit. And I mean, so Sean, Sean posted that they hope they do a season two. And that's something to bring up is that, like, as of right mm. now, there's no plans to do a season two of Moon Knight. Yeah, this is just a limited run right now. Um, just... Which is unfortunate because they end the whole show on a massive click cliffhanger because, you know, Arthur Harrow's in the insane asylum. <laughs> he gets pulled out. Some dude speaking Spanish. I thought it was the dude. I thought it was. I honestly thought it was going to be Ghost Rider, but it's not. It's Jake Locke. Like he's pushing him out. He puts him in the, the Rolls Royce limousine. Jesus. The yeah, white. With- Rolls Royce limousine with Spectre Conchu. on the license plate. Yeah, Conchu <laughs> as uh, in uh, the Mister Knight suit, and he's like, "I want you to meet my friend Jake Lockley." And you pull up and you see, and then he like, you know, in Spanish, you know, starts like, and then fucking caps Arthur Harrow, and you're like, "That's it. That's the end of the whole series." Like, I need the rest of this. Hanger. I love that um, shit. It's so good. It was so good. I, yeah, I got a oh <laughs> nice nice call out, Mahaffey. The final fight where Mark and Steven with a V worked together in a wreck shop was incredible. I definitely got to agree yeah. that, that those transitions between the suit and the hood and then the suit back again and then float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. Because I mean, my name's Steven with a V, whatever he says. That shit's great. Yeah, those transitions are nuts. It reminds me. So I was watching. Um, I won't go too off topic, but um, y'all know <laughs> that I'm we're excited massive, to see each other. I get it. I'm a massive hip hop head. OK. Okay. And Kendrick Lamar put out a song to yesterday because his new album comes out on Friday and he puts out the heart part five yesterday. Nice. And the whole video, it's a, it's like seven minutes of a video and he's rapping and his face transforms a bunch of times through the whole video. And it's a deep fake of him rapping. And it's just this seamless transition. And it's like, OJ Simpson, Will Smith, Jussie Smollett, Kanye West. And at the end of it, I got super emotional because the end of it was um, Kobe Bryant and oh, then shit. Nipsey Hussle, who, Fuck. you know, both passed away. Mm-hmm. And I was like, God damn, Kendrick Lamar is good. But and that's what it reminded me of is like this whole conchu, this the the Mark Spector and Arthur Harrow fight where like the like Moon Knight and Mr. Knight keep interchanging. And it's like it's seamless transition, and it it was so expertly done. Yeah, and I fucking loved all of it. I love this show pretty much through and through. It's my second favorite Marvel show. What was your first right now? Hawkeye. Hawkeye's hands down was the best. Really, one. really. I fucking loved Hawkeye start to finish. 
Damn. Uh, everybody hates Jeremy Renner. I think he's very good, especially in that role. And Kate Bishop and Yelena, um, uh, what's her name? Not Romanoff. It's Yelena. Shit, I can't remember her last name. Belova. Yelena Belova. There you go. Carried the whole fucking show. I mean, even the tracksuit mafia was great. Echo was great. Mafia was great. Um, uh, Echo was great. Kingpin again. Yeah, it's the best show in my opinion. I, I, I gotta, I gotta give sh- a shout out to Sean. He he saw that Kendrick Lamar one this morning. Uh, he definitely he said that their their fight definitely shows how at peace they are and they were able to work together. I did. I man, I love. Did you see it the concept like... art for Jake Lockley's suit though? It's no. the black Moon Knight suit. Oh fuck! Yeah, dude, they got to do a second season because I want what I want is Jake Lockley to be in a fight and then something happens and he slips up into Stephen Grant as Mister Knight and Mister and and Stephen Grant's like, "What the fuck? Why are we?" Why are we here? <laughs> we said no. We said no. <laughs> Just get punched in the face. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would be fantastic. Um, but no, I mean, I love that episode. And, it, and to your point, it ended, it ended with a bang with Jake Lockley. And it also ended with with them still strapping their legs into the bed, like <laughs> forgetting about that. Like, uh, it's awesome. It's so good. And now, and now it makes me think that Jake Lockley was the one always latching himself to the bed. Well, everybody, so everyone was like, did Jake Lockley, Lockley set up the date with the person at the movie theater? Because, like, it was, uh, the, not the movie theater, but the person at the um, the museum. That what's girl a, what's that a vegan going to want with steak? I right, because know, we know it's it? not, we know it's not um, uh, Steven, and we're pr- pretty sure it's not Mark. So... Mike says, I'm you pretty know? sure having Jake be a villain is going to piss off the dissociative identity disorder community. I completely agree. Don't make yeah, all one of guy the, who has all their personalities going to get pissed off. Like actually have like actually be the villain. I would now, love to know if the DID community had different logins. I mean, assuming the so, right? One thing that I after reading about this show, and this is one of the this is one of the problems that I had with. So I'm sorry, I'm just imagining different identities arguing on Reddit, just like who the fuck is J Twat ninety nine? Fuck you, hey Ricky B, go eat a D. You know, like <laughs> just arguing with themselves. Yeah, that's good shit. But I digress. So the one thing that I have an issue with with all of Phase Four right now. Um, and I'll talk about it in Multiverse of Madness because I think it's even more prevalent there. It's like, what are we building to? And after reading about some of the things, the production things that Moon Knight went through, um, you know, the director had this scene in mind where Jake, uh, not Jake, but Mark Spector and Stephen Grant confront their mother in that white space that they're in when they're in the mm-hmm. insane asylum. When they're trying to even out the scales, that there was a scene where they were going to confront their mother together, um, their abusive mother, which I thought would have been incredible. They should have done that, right? Um, and then there's also a scene that was cut because it was too expensive, where it was going to be a flashback of Kanchu fighting, but with Kingo from the Eternals, oh. and I think they were saying like three other Eternals. My guess is it would probably be Kingo Makari, um. And uh, Gilgamesh and maybe Thena that they oh, were yeah. all going, that they were going to be fighting um, with uh, Khonshu. So uh, that would have been badass. And to your point, cool. it would have it would have, would have been way too expensive just for those actors alone. I mean, granted, like, they're in the damn Egyptian museum in London. Jo- I can't forget. I can't remember his fucking name. Um, the guy who's Jon Snow's character in Eternals. What's his name? Black <laughs> yeah, just we'll go with that. Black Knight. Black Knight is the curator of a museum in fucking London. Right. He should have been in the goddamn show. Gemma Chan works at the same uh Cersei from the Eternals works at the same museum. Even just walking in the background. Right. Have talking about nothing. The overall universe. Like there's not like the Marvel shows have seemed pretty disjointed up until now. Um, I mean, I, I will say they did give a nod to the Eternals, and I don't know if you saw it online, but somebody free frame at the right moment. The Cersei couldn't have been there. Obviously, she had already been taken away by uh, that Celestial in the in the movie Eternals. Had spoiler it, alert! There had they? 
when when Stephen Grant goes to spin back time, there's a part where it's it's those six eyes from the Eternal in the skyline. You actually okay. see them. Right. You see I them don't know sweep when this the takes sky, place. Mike the says Dane Whitman. That's absolutely right. It is Dane Whitman. I was gonna say it is a legit English white man name. I mean, it's almost Dane White Man. Yeah, very close. Damn White Man, but Dane Whitman. But yeah, I mean it. So that it it, it kind of ties in. But to your point, they, they probably had a bunch of seeds of that, and they just it got too expensive. I mean, it just, which makes sense. But I think Moon Knight stands very well on its own, and, and you, you can watch it. And like this is again one of the issues that I have with the next topic, Multiverse of Madness, is that you can watch Moon Knight in an echo chamber and fully get what's going on. If you watch Multiverse of Madness as an outsider coming in. Yeah, you're like, who the fuck is Wanda Maximoff? It's a fever what dream. What is the dark hold? What is a multiverse? <laughs> well, who names their child after a continent? America. That sounds like a patriot right there. Right, my, my, it's my child, America. So verdict. So verdict on on Moon Knight. What did you What did you think? Is I'm, good? I'm going high, man. I, I, for me, I'm, you always you always remember your first. I'm gonna enjoy Loki. For, until the wheels fall off, give me Tom Hiddleston as being a bad, good guy, anti-hero with Owen Wilson all day. Plus, you get Kang the Conqueror, which is who I think we're really building up towards right now. Are we? Um, that's what I hope. Kang and Doom, I think, are, are definitely the big two big bads we'll be seeing. But they're gonna. I mean, there's so many storylines now; they're all gonna be split. We have talked about it before, being terrestrial, celestial. It's it's at home or it's intergalactic. Um, and even Loki in Loki variant, you know, that timeline where he's caught in a storm in a store and he's first trying to find uh, what's her name? Sissy? No. God, Sylvie. Yeah. Sylvie. Thank you. It was an S uh, trying to find Sylvie for the first time. Uh, supposedly in it's the same timeline in the same area where the X-Men are actually fighting Kang the Conqueror. And it's supposedly all that blow off is from Storm doing battle and things like that. So like allegedly, allegedly <laughs> there is a lot being led there. I, I like that. The next thing I liked to your point was Hawkeye. I guess what? I have a last name. Hawkins. My dad flew uh, E2 Hawkeyes. I love me some Hawkeye. I'm always going to love it. So that was definitely right there. Plus, I had a golden retriever as a kid. Pizza dog, amazing. Lucky, so lucky. I had a golden retriever as a kid too. So I mean, I mean, I also I mean, love dogs. I don't care what they look like, their size, or anything. That's true. Like, as long as, dogs. as long as they love kisses and belly rubs, I'm good to go. Uh, um, battle world with Kang at the helm. That's I mean, that's what Mike thinks. I mean, fine. Like battle world with Kang at that. Like whatever. Like at this point, I don't give a fuck about what's going on in the mcu and it's really <laughs> driving me crazy i mean it, again i think we, we it suffers from the end game syndrome you got 12 years it had a nice it. little ending they got a bow on it and now they got a restart and it's like ugh. the first four movies of phase one were iron man incredible hulk i mean kind of incredible hulk iron man <laughs> iron man 2 captain america and thor at the end of Iron Man 1, Samuel Jackson shows up and he's like, I'm with S.H.I.E.L.D. and I'm putting together the fucking Avengers, baby. And there's the you big... want to talk about it. And then there's it, the big it thing, continues right? through the rest of the fucking thing. Phase 4, it starts off with Black Widow, which takes place after Civil War, in between Civil War and Infinity War. And you're like, all right, cool. You know, you get a backstory of Natasha Romanoff. That movie should have came out three fucking four years ago at this point. Yeah, we all, we all agree that was a fuck up. Um... And then you get Shang-Chi, which I loved Shang-Chi as a intro story. And then Wong shows up at the end of Shang-Chi and he's like, let's go, blah, blah, blah. And then you have Eternals, which introduces Eternals. And they talk heavily about why they weren't involved with Thanos. It directly correlates to what's happening in the MCU from a cosmic level because Eros shows up and Thanos' his brother. And they're going after, you know, Cersei and, and the rest of the Eternals that get kidnapped and all that stuff. And and all of that and then you have the black whatever it is whatever sword that is that dane whitman is looking at whether it's all black or whether it's the actual the necro um, sword or something like that yeah whether it's all black the necro sword or it's something else and then mahershala ali's like you ready for that mr whitman and you're like fuck yeah okay i'm cool i'm in and then you have spider-man no way home that's like this nostalgia fest and this actual like origin the finalization of the origin story for fucking peter parker and you get 
the fan service of Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield coming in and they kind of break the universe and you still don't kind of know what's where the thing is headed. And then we come to multiverse of madness and you're like, where's the payoff for anything that's being built up and nothing exists in this fucking movie. I, I think before we dump it, jump into that, I know we talked about Thor. I want to at least put a button on the God debate and gore and that kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, to your point, you just listed off a repeat of what started in phase one, right? Origin stories. We're getting a shit ton of origin stories, a little bit of sprinkles here and there. The, the formula worked, and I think they're going back to it. Maybe that's a mistake, but it is setting down these little tiny Easter eggs. So I think eh, for now, I'm, I've, I've said this to you and Mike the other day. I'm not rushing out to see a, a release except for maybe Thor Love and Thunder. That might be my last well, one for a while. Well, this is how you get a fucking Marvel movie. You put Guns and Roses in the trailer. <laughs> and you put Chris Hemsworth in a fucking trucker hat and a cutoff t-shirt. <laughs> and you're like, all right, now we got like the 80s training montage with him yeah. and all that shit of him getting fit and all that. And then you have Mighty Thor with Jane Foster. I mean, that was a hundred. That was a minute and 45 seconds of pure like, all right, and I'm going to go see this movie. This movie looks fucking sick. And it had nothing to do with the bad guy. I don't, you you don't even know what the bad guy looks like. You don't know if there is one. It could just be like this whole movie. I'd watch it if it was just like, you know what? This is what the transition from Thor being like, I love to kick ass. And that's all I do is fight for 1500 years. And I'm just, I'm just, you know what? I want to take a fucking break. I'd watch that. I watch that movie. Just like Thor takes a break. Give me that. He loses that weight a little bit. He has a little come to Jesus moment with himself. Like, I need to get, I need to snap out of it. And he walks away from war. Uh, but we don't even see Gore the God Killer, but we see his effect. And what's great is it's a massive ice beast that Thor just remembers battling him a hundred years earlier in the comics. Like, what happened to you? And it's a shot for shot of fucking straight out of the That's, comic yeah. book. Right out of the it's book. Amazing. It's beautiful, dude. It's amazing. And if and if people even pull it up side by side, the only thing that's different is, of course, we get Korg, which is always welcome. Taika Waititi can do no wrong. So, <laughs> yeah, Guardians of the Galaxy, Galaxy, Thor's Day I'd Off. I fucking watch it. Hell yeah. I you think the bow, thing, bow. that shit starts off the movie. Chicka, chicka, chicka. The, thing that, the thing that's really kind of like getting under my skin is like, it, even beyond the Nick Fury thing, the disconnected Marvel movies from the earlier phases still felt connected to the Marvel universe as a whole. Like mm -hmm. Doctor Strange, the original Doctor Strange felt completely disconnected from the Marvel universe at that time until it was like, oh, he's holding one of the Infinity Stones. We know that the Tesseract is an Infinity Stone. We know that um, I don't Power know Stones and Guardians of the Galaxy or after. Um, right. Yeah, Gug, I thought it was before zone. that. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, like, we're kind of like, like all these disconnected movies are building towards like this Infinity Saga, and I think that's what's going on with these incursions. Like, mm. I mean, and we'll talk about it when we dive into Doctor Strange a little bit more. But like, it's just, I don't give I, a shit about Battle World at this point. Like, and I don't really care about Kang the Conqueror at this point. Like, I just, I'm hoping for great things from Thor: Love and Thunder, but I got to tell you. I, I, That's like I the gotta last go with them in phase four to hook me is like I, Thor love and thunder. I think what kills me is that I enjoyed black Panther, the number one so much, but all obviously the, the, the loss of life, but on top of that, all of like the weird, like selfishness that it sounds like it's coming out of that movie at the moment from different actors. It drives me to not want to see it or at least wait. It's really difficult for Black Panther because, like, I watched Black Panther 1, and the chemistry between everybody on that movie is exceptional. Hell and, yeah. I mean, Chadwick Boseman is charismatic, and Michael B. Jordan as Eric Killmonger is also very charismatic. And they carry that movie, and, I mean... The side characters of Shuri, she was like cool, like she's the cool younger sister. Right. Um, you know, you have Mbaku, you have um Okoye, Mbaku. and then you have um uh I can't Lupita Nyong'o's character, um Nakia. And you're like, all right, these cut they all play together, but like Chadwick Boseman's like the fucking catalyst of that. And I don't yeah. know if that movie 
Black Panther 2 is going to be able to kind of hold on to that. I'm definitely curious where they go with it. I'm very curious because they're not going to recast them, which I think is a mistake at this point. I would say probably it makes sense to recast him. And I mean, like someone like John David Washington could come in and play fucking Black Mm -hmm. Panther very well. He has a very similar cadence to Chadwick Chadwick Boseman. Um, I def- I'm more. I'm curious too if they even lean into any of the like it, the Ennead with with Basque as being like the god. Yeah, because of- he's mentioned specifically in 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 the in like that's the connection to the greater MCU is that Basque is mentioned in in Moon Knight. As so, one of the uh, Enead, so I think there's 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 hope. I mean, there's hope there, but again, I'm just not driven to to go see anything anytime soon besides Lord Thor: Love and Thunder, just because I enjoyed Ragnarok so so much, and that's. I hate to say it. I've seen that that little toy of of gore. I, is there I'm a like, toy of gore that God put you? Oh, dude! Does it's, it look it's, bad? It's, it's sure as shit ain't comic accurate. I'll tell you that. I mean, if you look at what's his face? Oh my god, I'm I'm terrible with names tonight. Um, the Maw from Ebony Maw. Yeah, looked amazing. Looked just, I mean, pretty pretty creepily to the comic, right? Like. Pretty good. We just get. I mean, I know Christian Bale's a famous actor, and they, they think that moneymaker is here, but like, you don't need. I mean, it's Josh Brolin, that's a famous face, and you put a butt chin on him with a bunch of butts, all the all the butt cracks on that chin, and he crushed it as Thanos. <laughs> and Sean said, "Ew, gross. He's got a nose." Yeah, yeah, he doesn't look great. Yeah, he does I, it. That's it's, unfortunate. <laughs> it's like a monk. Got, it's like a, an angry monk. It's coming to kill yeah. gods, and I'm just like, eh, fine. I, I, I mean, I, I don't, I don't get it, but we'll see. We'll see. I um, like Taika Waititi, so yeah, in Taika, we, we trust. Um, so let's actually bring it all back. Now that I've I've ranted about Thor, that one and a half minute trailer took six minutes to talk about. Uh, Doctor Strange, Multiverse of Madness. Overall, let me let me give you the score online here. Just to just to give us some discussion points. First off, it's Doctor Strange cast a forbidden spell that opens the doorways to the multiverse, including alternate versions of himself, whose threat to this, to humanity is too great for the combined forces of Strange, Wong, and Wanda Maximoff. Um, That's not true at all. That's not even remotely totally what the, the movie is. a lie. First off, yeah, that's Nothing a lie. Nothing so Spider Man No Way Home so is relevant you- in this movie. They brought you in under false pretense. IMDb rating is only seven and a half out of 10, which is identical basically to the percentage score of tomato meter, 75% on Rotten Tomatoes, but the audience is giving it 87%. Uh, Critics consensus is Dr. Strange and the Multiverse of Madness labors under the weight of the sprawling MCU, but Sam Raimi's distinctive direction casts an entertaining spell. That's pretty. That's a well articulated way of saying what I've been saying. If you yeah. like Sam Raimi, you'll like you this love movie. this movie. Yeah, I mean it's it's a, the scariest version of the MCU you're gonna get without losing everybody below or below the age of seventeen, right? Like, can't be rated R just quite yet. And I, I love Sam Raimi. I enjoyed his Spider Man. You know, the first two. Uh, I I think that third one was definitely rushed, and you know they're just trying to make some money. We'll we'll find out that those will be like the Schumachers of the of the Batman universe. Um, but like, I, I definitely think it was a fun, darker movie. But unfortunately, to everybody's point, I, I think it was rushed. I mean, it was two. It's one of the shorter movies. And it's two hours and six minutes long. Yep. I mean, I just we just watched the Batman that was three hours long, which could have felt too long if you didn't love four alternate endings. Basically, uh, this movie right off the jump feels fast paced as shit. You literally hit the ground running with America Chavez and Defender Doctor Strange trying to get to the Book of Ashanti, and I, if I didn't sit there. And hear the word Ashanti and only think of the singer Ashanti. That distracted me for a fo- solid five minutes. Yeah. I was like, what does she look like? That, no, that's Aaliyah. Is, she, is Ashanti still alive? Like, I, I, spent, still alive. I spent many minutes wanting to whip my phone out and Google. Like, it threw me off that bad. I realized that might be comic accurate, but dang, I just I couldn't get past it. And then we get, you know, uh, this, this battle with a demon. 
that's star power. America Chavez opens a portal, sucks everybody into it, uh, but not before the Defender Strange is, is killed. Um, and again, all that's in five minutes. We kind of get no real explanation except for, boom, we get to jump to our Stephen Strange waking up in a sweat, having dreamt that whole thing himself, uh, and, and antics ensue. Uh, I'm trying to, I don't want to go through the entire yeah, movie we don't blow by blow. That. Uh, cause I, I'm going to do a terrible job paraphrasing in any ways, but I will, I'll say off the jump, right. With Wong being the sorcerer Supreme, I expected a lot more out of Wong. However, I feel like Wong does a great job of trying to just be the guy who knows a lot without being an asshole about it. You know, like mm-hmm. Dr. Strange in the comic, he's kind of a prick. You know, he it takes him a long, long time to not be a prick. This train, this strange is pretty arrogant still. He just kind of goes, whatever, I'll deal with whatever happens next. I, I always figure it out. He's overly con- uh, confident and he's still probably a little bitter. He's not the source of Supreme, as he constantly mentions. Uh, and also doesn't even bow to Wong, which is tradition. He's supposed to bow to the source of Supreme. Um, but we get American Chavez who shows up, finds is is basically battling this uh Gargan. temporarily invisible it's not yeah, but it's like, not Sh- it's like shumagorath but not shumagorath because they can't use the name shumagorath yeah <laughs> it's not, it doesn't have little tiny uh other stars that come out and yeah latch into your face and take your mind over um we do get an awkward wedding with uh dr jane foster not jane foster excuse me uh dr christine christine and it's just like, why? Like, I get it. it. It's going, it's tough, but I feel like it's a little bit of a filler to remind you. Oh, by the way, he does like her. I'm like, yeah, we remember the movie. It's Rachel McAdams. We all remember Rachel McAdams. Um, she I looks guess great as a redhead, by the way. I'm pretty sure she looked great and bald, but you know. I didn't really care for her as a blonde. She looks great as a redhead. Oh, that she had like yeah. a, she had like a balayage in this, in that first scene, right? Like halfway root showing when she, um, the, the future universe she's a redhead uh yeah 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 in, in the alternate universe so i we get this kind of i, I guess steven is sad right mm-hmm. and that's really shoved in your face and then we get to jump to steven's fighting he's saving america chavez for some reason he feels his bond because he dreamt about her last night and she was fighting with a version of him and there's that bond we're supposed to believe is so strong that right away he's going to like do anything to save her. Um, in the meantime, they figure out that that octopus has runes on it and runes is witchcraft. So who does Dr. Strange go to? We get a little WandaVision theme song trill. And then he comes walking into the orchard after we get a little bit of a scene of Wanda having a dream of her kids and that being torturous for her and her waking up upset and, uh, and immediately being like, um, just sad as well as we got everybody sad we're all we all have losses right and it seems that nobody knows how to deal with it especially wanda i I talked about it me and you mahaffey kind of talked about a little bit wanda has an arc where she loses her kids that she granted made up but they were very real to her but at the end of wandavision she has this like I get it moment. I'm I'm gonna let it go. I appreciate it. I've learned my lesson. Holding on to Vision's face as he disappears into stardust, and we're like, man, she got it. But now we're supposed to automatically know that the dark hold corrupts you. That's what I'm saying, man. Hundred percent. Like, like you try once, you, it's you like heroin, no baby. You yeah. legit have no idea that the dark hold does this to her. Now, don't get me wrong. The whole scene with them in the fucking apple field, the apple orchard. And she's like, why don't you bring America here? And he stops. And she's like, you didn't say her name, did you? And I was like, oh, shit, he didn't. And then the hex (laughs) comes off and you're like, okay, this is cool as fuck. But like, again, all you get is like hints of the Darkhold and they say the Darkhold in WandaVision, but it's not like the Darkhold is actually. I mean, Agatha Harkness had the Darkhold. Yeah. And she was a really badass, right? Like. Yeah, she, so, had, I mean, she had duty fingers too, like everybody else seems to have when you when yeah. they use it. Like, I, again, 
maybe I just need maybe I need a little bit more time to adjust. <laughs> I mean, I think that Wanda, Wanda in the movie, was about as close as we're going to get to House of M. Wanda ever. Um, do we? Will we ever get it now? No, considering sure we'll never end? get House of M. I like they'd have to spend fucking twelve years building up to House of M. <laughs> Um, like they did the Infinity Saga. Well, Elizabeth and, Olsen doesn't age, so that's fine. Right. Um, Mike, uh, I'm fair. trying to justify it, dude. That's I fair. get it. I, mean, like, I understand that she killed her whole coven because killed... of the dark hole. Wanda goes from zero to sixty in one fucking movie. Like in one in one instant, Wanda goes from I got it. I'm just you know I'm like studying and all that shit to I will kill every fucking sorcerer on the fucking planet to get. America Chavez. And don't Just get me so wrong. I can go to another fucking... universe and kill myself to, to take now, my kids. Like the first part of that scene is fucking stupid where she's flying around like fucking Iron Man shooting hexes. That <laughs> thing. And I'm like, that's terrible. When she starts using the reflections to try to grab her from the universe. That's incredible. I love yeah, that. Shit, that shit was definitely evil dead to me. Like, I mean, that's cool. And I don't like Sam Raimi. Like, I, I really don't like evil dead. I could take it or leave it. Army of darkness. I could take it or leave it. Spider-Man, I can take it or leave it. Like, I get it. Every, people love Sam Raimi, and they love that style. And I like that horror element of this movie. I do. But there was no, like, they off had, like, the whole spell that happened in fucking Spider-Man No Way Home was so catastrophic that the entire universe had to forget that fucking Peter Parker existed. Mm -hmm. That every universe and every dimension had to forget that Peter Parker existed, and we get a fucking throwaway butt joke about Spider Man from America Chavez <laughs> shoots, in the beginning. Bit, of shoots the webs movie. out of his butt. I don't so know. Obviously, did, yeah. none of that mattered at all. <laughs> so, like, I mean, there's no payoff in this movie. This movie doesn't get to be the like first like big movie into the into phase four and it was like there there there's no there again there's no payoff i don't feel like there's any payoff in this movie the hype moment of the illuminati showing up and it's fucking reed and all that stuff and you're like oh that's cool and then they get fucking soloed and fucking five minutes later and and wanda kills every single one of them and you're like I guess that's cool. She's and you're just like, a oh, kid. Strong as shit. And then like at the end of the movie, America Chavez essentially almost kills one, like almost goes toe to toe with Wanda. And you're like, well, this doesn't make any sense. It, I, I, I agree with a lot of those sentiments, but that's, that's kind of where I'm going to defend the movie is like, it's supposed to be scary, right? She's a Scarlet Witch. It's supposed to be this like overpowered witch who's now been corrupted by the dark hold. Granted, we're supposed to jump to that assumption. We get the scary through the mirrors stuff, and then we get this over explained. Actually, we, get, we do get a fun little like uh, multiverse hop through session, like we did in the first one. And we get a paint universe and a cube universe, and we get to walk past Bruce Campbell, who then gets a spell to get punched in the face by himself, like Evil Dead, <laughs> over and over and over again, where his hand is literally trying to kill him. Um, I love that that throw out and the little throwaway jab and Bruce Campbell being in so many of the MCU films is now like the best running joke for me, um, which vindicates cool. me from last year's uh, April Fool's fuck up. Right. Thank you very much. He is in the movie. So it's Mike, if you're going to be combative movie. to me, get on the fucking show and argue your point. All I'm going <laughs> to say to you, dog, like I get it. Like the spell where he forgets Peter Parky is fucking Spider-Man. People know who fucking Spider-Man Spider is, obviously. Parker. Spider like people know who spider-man is and that spell was so important enough that it caused this multi-universal shift again none of that is addressed in this movie at all and like incursions like i get it like there's an incursion an incursion happens and clea fucking strange shows up at the end of the goddamn movie and she's like there's an incursion we need to go stop it and i'm like so am i get to understand that every universe has their own set of dimensions right so there's dimensions 20 and then there's universes a bazillion so there's 20 times a bazillion dimensions really, yeah. that's annoying sean says yes that's annoying but <laughs> what i did again what i liked is first we get 
the 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 Stan Remy style of spookiness with the, with the dream walking and the it basically felt like the tree or that like demystified demon presence running rolling through the hills of Evil Dead and things like that. So it, it was an homage, I think, to his style of creepiness. I love that. What I get out of that too is from we get to see the Illuminati show up, and that to me was. Right, right before the movie, no shit. Right before the movie, there was a little featurette for Doctor Strange and Multiverse of Madness, which I was like, "Why would you put that before this movie?" You bunch of fucking idiots. And it's Sam Raimi, and he's like, "This movie it was an opportunity, um, you know, to give the fans what they want, but like not how they were gonna want it." And he was right as shit because we got all the things we wanted. We got John Kranz, uh, Krasinski as Reed Richards. We get Black Bolt back for a little bit, which was awesome i was more excited about black bolt than i was reed richards we get a little bit we get the legit theme song from the x-men 97 as professor x rolls in so with I mean, danny elfman know, killed the fucking score and like, danny elfman does the score yeah i mean danny elfman killed the score and i mean yeah i'm with you about black awesome. bolt completely because if they do world war hulk black bolt plays a huge part in the hulk coming back from planet from sakar or whatever yeah. and like that's like that shit is badass. I love and I love Black Bolt as a character. And um, I mean, is it Anton Vance? Is that the actor's name? I think I that's right. It. Like he right. was wasted in the Inhumans TV show because the Inhumans TV show was a dumpster fire. I mean, but them he showing and just I'm sorry, <clears throat> just obliterating anything in that in that blast. Like in the comics, he, he barely whispers and just splits the moon. Right, like. He's so OP'd. And if he had, if for Reed Richards being the smartest man in the universe, why would you forecast the most powerful person in the room who could kill you with his voice or with his mouth or whatever? What mouth? Shut up, Reed. Just let him talk. Just let just let him get punched in the gut once and go, Ugh. she's obliterated. Like so to so that irked me for the Illuminati being so smart in that universe. What the shit? And I'll never look at string cheese or spaghetti or <laughs> balloon animals the same again. And that's such a great way for somebody who's stretchy to get killed, by the way. Just, yeah. just Anton Mount. Mike does Anton Mount. Thank you, Mike. He's also Pike in the new Star Trek TV show, I think. Oh, he's, he's great right. as Pike. I heard he's great. I mean, yeah. It it it's, it definitely brings the pizzazz that you get from uh, Bruce Greenwood from the movies, uh, who's also a, a common voice of Batman. Uh, so you get that presence, um, but it's it's the original timeline. I could go on all day about that. I've got Captain Pike. This is the one who ends up in the chair that he can only talk with a, a beeping light. Mm. It's so I can't wait to see if that actually. He happens. does but, have great hair in that show. I've seen him on TikTok a lot. And well, you, you know who they cast is um, as Chatner as a Kirk, Captain Kirk in that show now, right? Who? One of the guys from Vampire Diaries. Oh, uh, Paul Wesley. Is that his name, Stefan? St yeah, Steph yeah, that's Paul Wesley. He, he's now Captain Kirk, so that's I don't know. Oh, that's cool. I, I'm enjoying it. Um, but yeah, so we get those cameos. It's we a get cool scene like. Captain I mean, Carter, Captain Marvel. I felt bad for for that actress being Captain Marvel for all of six seconds, and she just gets bodied, like like, and gets literally crushed up by her own statue. Yeah, like, oh, <laughs> oops. Uh, and then Mordo. And there's also like little comic book nuggets in there because like Reed Richards is mentioning his kids, which right. the there's a TikToker Straw Hat Goofy who talked about that. And he's he absolutely before, right. And by the way, that like, guy is blowing up. Yeah, he is. He's incredible. He, he was in the beginning of my movie. And he's like, hey, yeah. he's ready for Dr. Strange. I was like, oh, shit. It's Troy. What's up, If man? he hasn't. So if, if Reed Rich, So Reed Richards is like, I got kids at my house. I got kids at home, blah, 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 blah. If those kids are even like 10 or 11 years old, they show up in Solo Wanda in any universe. It doesn't fucking matter. Franklin Richards is the most powerful mutant in the whole fucking marvel comics like he creates universes as a child like he's the most powerful mutant it, it, and, it might have been mat, nap time though you know could have been could have can't, been can't make universes when you're sleeping but at least um, there'll be someone there to raise them i i need that accent to be 
gone. I'm actually really, really happy that at Who? the end of this film, Wanda's accent. Pick one. Yeah. Are you pissed off in Russian or are you normal? Like, you know, just like, ugh, this goddamn pick it. Stick with it. Somebody, somebody be on her ass about it. You said that. Mike brings um, up a good point that says they missed an important detail that Wanda in eight three eight isn't the Scarlet Witch and wouldn't ex- and would explain why Reed doesn't. It does. It absolutely. Does. You're absolutely right. And in this universe, Wanda is clearly not who she is in the previous universe. So she's, um, you know, for them to think that they can handle her was fine. So let me ask you this then do we know let me ask the producer on the show in chat right now what universe is house of enemy it's not 838 obviously it's not 616 it's the mcu uh, um, i'm curious cuz cuz now we got erica chavez who's numbering them and now we've got that other dr christine who's a multiversologist or whatever the made up term that is um, but no, it, towards the end, I, 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 I definitely, you know, I don't, jump, don't really I remember the last scares. half of this movie after the Illuminati. Well, after we get, oh, we said technically six one six. Okay. Um, so it, towards the end of the movie, what do we get? We actually get Illuminati gets blown out. Uh, we get America Chavez and Dr. Strange running away with Christine, who's in her night nurse get up, uh, running out of the building, the running away. Oh, in the comic book universe supposed to be 616 interesting um so we get them running through the tunnels trying to find the book of ashanti they find that doorway to the book of ashanti they get to the book of ashanti guess who shows up billy badass who has been limping behind them like a zombie possessed by a it's demon very Which, granted, fucking evil dead the last half of this movie yeah. is very evil dead to be fair you wouldn't be super coordinated piloting your own body from another universe so i completely gonna have some, agree with you the dream walking or, stuff is interesting um and she you know again just annihilates the book of ashanti that's that's donezo uh and then we get <laughs> let me see what, what happens then oh we get uh what's her face america chavez gets snatched back to that universe um and then we get uh the dead eye night doctor strange yes we get the dead eye doctor strange we basically get sent to the same Raimi universe for doctor strange uh where the incursion is taking place with christine and doctor strange meeting finally after this that, that whole universe was trippy as hell just everything's disintegrating or turning into black goo which to yeah. me i thought was going to be a great intro for uh gore the the god butcher because that's what he looks like in the comic is all that goo um but we get this Doctor Strange who's been living in a house of, of just basically micro dimensions. It's it's like a TARDIS, but a building. Every every right. couple of feet is another dimension, <laughs> and uh, and we finally get Doctor Strange with three eyes, and they'd have their little battle, and oh whoopsie doopsie, he gets shoved out the window, and then spike you later. Um, so that that Doctor Strange not being the one from What If, I think right. underwhelmed me. A little I was bit, right? Expecting like full on flux go fuck up some Scarlet Witch. Things got out of hand. I'm gonna go show her what's up. Doesn't like, that say that in the movie. Great. Right. Oh, doesn't, doesn't say things got out of hand in the movie. They mention it though. They mentioned the Illuminati saying that uh and all he had to say was that things got out of hand. Right. It was Mordo complaining about him about uh Doctor Strange after reading the dark hole. Like to your point, that's that's a good catch. Um, so then we get Doctor Strange, now he's got that universe as Darkhold and uses it to do the same spell. And now it's like, oh, I learned a new trick. This is Doctor Strange doing what he does. He heard about something. He's going to do it too. Okay, now he's going to do it to body walk or dream walk into a dead body. Right. And we get the ramifications of possessing a dead body and spirits show up. It's just this whole, we get a very fast explanation of what is happening immediately and then just like we get with him talking to american chavez at american chavez at the end of the film we have christine standing over him in one universe whispering stephen strange you're the master of the mystic arts and their spirits use them and it's supposed to be like this oh i feel like there was an inside joke somewhere that somebody just deleted on accident in another scene and now he suddenly can control the spirits instead of being ass kicked by them. And now he's using them as bat wings, like he's Dracula and the fly over to another mountaintop. Like 
going Kid back real quick. Mike said <laughs> the music battle was badass. Mike Mahaffey. I turned to my wife in the middle of the movie as soon as that shit started happening, and I said, "This is the reason why Mike will love this movie." Because like, of the Fantasia battle? Sure. This is the reason why. Mike is the music guy. As soon as the fucking notes start coming up and it's Danny <laughs> Elkin's <laughs> fucking score and he's shooting fucking trebles and goddamn clefts back to each other. And I'm like, I looked at her and I was like, Mike's going to fucking love this. Like, it was, I'll it was very it. Disney. You can't <laughs> tell me that wasn't like a very like Disney cartoon Fantasia. It was like straight out of fucking Fantasia is what it was yeah, like. I mean, it was I mean, cool. It was, wrong. it was cool shit. But I was just like... It was a fun way to fight, and you're like, I okay. oh, absolutely. They're they're just they're doing riff offs now, and like, and Mike actually shared something with you earlier and me today about uh, when when Reed Richards shows up and like the member of the Fantastic Four. There's evidently, I, I heard the line in the theater because there was only like 20 of us, and I was probably and everybody's doing like the silent fist bumps because I think everybody just wants to hear it because if it was a packed room, nobody would have heard shit. Yeah. But, I, but I heard the line and it was, you know, I, I think didn't you guys chart during the 60s and come to find out, I guess there was a band called the Fantastic Four in the 1960s is, that yeah. did chart. And of course, that's a call back to him being like the music guy from when he was a surgeon and all that kind of stuff. So that's that's cute. I thought he was making fun of like the year they came out, like the Fantastic Four. Didn't they come out in the 60s, which is another great reference. I thought it was more tongue in cheek that way, but it plays. Um, but yeah, that mu the music battle scene. To me, hits cheese. It hits the cheese factor because we're in the dark dimension. And here comes these bright notes. If it was more like red and black and blue all over, maybe. But because it was like I don't know, highlighter glowy, I guess. I mean, I don't know. And then they start playing fucking Beethoven. It sounded like <laughs> it was Beethoven. It was like dun 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 dun. And I was like, I'm out. I'm totally out of this. This is taking me out of the movie. I mean, it looked really cool. Um. <laughs> I wonder if that battle was meant to be longer too because of that. Like, I wonder if like, if that itself should have been 10, 15 minutes instead of just being in, in a small room with two potentially sorcerer Supremes, but I don't know. Yeah. Uh, it, it could, to me, it felt like um, it, it felt a little bit like the fight scene we get with uh, Anakin and Obi-Wan in revenge of the Sith. Right. Well, well, well a like fun lightsaber years. scene in the book, it was so much more in depth, right? You get this kind of mental dance that they're sharing with each other by just changing stancing, showing the different fight style they're going to use. And it right. forces the other one to change their fight style. It's it, when you get to see those nuances, at least mentally, I think it's better. Unfortunately, we don't get that in the film where we're not going to see it here in Doctor Strange. All we're going to see is a bunch of like really dexterous finger turning and then maybe some. 616 had orange magic and incursion strange had purple magic like agatha since he was using the dark hold Ooh, there we go thank you for the explanation that makes that makes total sense that means that defender strange would have had blue magic okay fine 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 um but we get to end up what, what happens we uh, get dr strange she goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with uh with wanda for a bit and finally he gets to inspiration talk time with America. Hey, worst America. scene in the whole movie. This is the because worst scene in the whole I movie. I need you to just believe in yourself, kid. Look into my zombie face and feel encouraged. Yeah, I'm going to be freaked out that my would-be best friend, Dr. Strange, is talking to me now, and he looks like necrotic. I just, I'm good. But no, she gets up, and she punches a hole in the universe <laughs> and just uh, like peep show into the other universe with that Wanda who's been basically possessed all day showing up to, for the kids. Ah, we get our universe's Wanda just trying to be like, no, it's going to be fine to my not kids. And the kids are obviously smart enough to know. Otherwise it's, it was just, it felt weird. It was, it felt rushed. Uh, I, I got to admit that part. And, and, and Wanda again goes from like full on pissed off to completely broken in like less than 30 seconds. I actually felt more for that scene than anything else in the movie, as far as emotion is concerned, where it's herself. Somebody posted that uh, Marvel phase four really showing you that the only person that you can actually count on in life is yourself. And it was like <laughs> a picture of like Sylvie and Loki and then like Tom <laughs> Holland, Andrew Garfield and 
uh, Toby Maguire hugging each other, and then like Wanda and a Wanda, and you're like, yeah, you're absolutely right. That's that's true. I mean, we're some Moon, on we're some Moon Knight too, man. Mark and Steven. Yeah, right. Mark and Steven. Yeah. <laughs> the only person you can count on is okay. So, but no, I mean, I like then, that scene the, where she's like holding her face and all that. And I'm like, okay, that makes sense. I mean, if you love yourself enough, I guess you'll listen, right? Like, okay, right. fine. Oh, I just, I should have just come over to this universe and give you a hug. Strange's arc in this movie was all about letting go of the knife and trusting someone. Are you Googling this? No, this is how, like, Mike, so Doctor Strange is Mike's favorite character, and let me tell you what. He loved the first movie, which I agree with is a great I movie. Enjoy. Hell yeah. But, like, he just loves that character, and Mike, so here's what happens with Mike, and he's he's right about this movie that... You, you know he's going to get so irritated with you, he's just going to pop up in this, in this right, show. Right, Oh no, that's you, a, I mean no, but like no, this isn't right this isn't a bad thing at all. Like this is what okay. Mike does. <laughs> She's gonna comfort you because there are mitigating factors that are external to this that are the probably the reason why I'm so critical and don't really care for this movie. And he says his whole thing is like people that we normally agree with on things and like people that things like Mike and I like Mike and I are typically in sync when it comes to movies. We're like all right, we like this, we like this, like this, and this is like the first time. And it's not the only time. It's happened like one other time where like it's completely divergent, where I'm like, this movie fucking blows, and Mike's like, that's not true. And he's what he does is is he'll he'll clue me into things that he knows will like make me think about the movie, and I'm like, oh, okay, like the Christmas Carol thing that he just brought brought up, and I'm like, yeah, that makes sense, blah blah blah. And I don't get me wrong. As soon as I like start thinking about it and everything, I'm like, this movie is not nearly as bad as what I fucking think it is. And then I talk about it today and I'm like, no, this movie, like, I really no, didn't I'm right. like, I really sucks. didn't fucking like this movie. Uh, and then I was talking to Ashley earlier and I was like, I need to watch that movie again because I really was in a bad headspace when I watched it. So I need to watch it again. And again, like, I, I just want something. To be building, everybody's like, "Oh, they're building towards Secret Wars and everything." And I guess because, like, I don't know shit about Secret Wars, and I need to read it. Oh, it's maybe a then, yeah. Like, I need to like actually like read it. And I know the Russo brothers are doing Secret Wars. I think. Um, Most well, not, not I know. I think. So, um, that. I think this movie could have benefited from a Wanda Maximoff movie that took place in between. WandaVision and this movie. Mm. Like, I get why Strange is where he's at. I do. Like, I really yeah. do understand it. He's lost Christine. He is not the Sorcerer Supreme. He needs, to, and he goes to every one of these universes where they're telling him, No, you're the fucking problem, dickhead. Yeah. And he's like, No, man, Wanda's trying to fuck everybody up. And he's like, They're like, No, nah, we don't give a shit about Wanda. Like, you're the problem, asshole. Like, you're the one yeah. that fucked everything up. You're the one who did this. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, I understand that. So you kind of get why he's where he's at. But, like, I I feel like none of that, there's none of that for Wanda. Like, she's just, she's just, uh, she's very upset about her kids and Vision. Like, she, you you spent all of WandaVision of, of, of trying to get to the point where she finally talks about it and she's grieving and you have that really great flashback scene of her going to the house that vision bought for them mm -hmm. and her like doing the whole house of M fucking explosion. Um, and then like white vision shows up and all of that. It just, you know, it really could have benefited from either another WandaVision season where or just a Wanda season where it focuses on her journey of learning through the dark hold and all that stuff and kind of coming to grips with her past. Um, but it just it doesn't feel like it, it feels like none of what her what none of what she went through in this movie feels earned. I loved her in this movie. Don't get me wrong. It just yeah. feels like none of that was earned because I think that WandaVision spent five episodes of like the shtick, let's go through the decades from the 70s to the 90s or the 2000s. Yeah. And then tried to shove all of the emotional shit into five and six. 
which I, I think yeah yeah no i agree i think if to your point if we had a wanda story in between this or a whole wanda movie it could have easily been her just day walk or dream walking in those other universes and just getting and having the the reasons to be pissed and, and one of them being house of m and people are like people like uh professor x and the illuminati you know basically trying to pull her down to heal like just heal like just be our bitch you know and her having that anger build up and i think seeing how in every universe she gets treated poorly and not necessarily this is not always true in the comics obviously she's she has kids and that kind of stuff she gets vision but like i think there's a lot of a background with with wanda that could have been pulled on that shows she is uh you know pretty much pegged as a bad person in every universe right there's rarely one where she's the perfect person the scarlet witch is not a great name it is it's feared or people don't trust you like you could have spent a whole movie and then had you know cameos from like x-men actors being like hey wanda what's going on like and just talking to her as like I can't believe Cyclops did that to you again or whatever, like any kind of reference or you could have had, that could have been a, a Milky way introduction for the X-Men, right? Like, and then in this universe, not only does she not have the person she loves, not only does everybody no longer talk to her, she doesn't have her kids anymore and her brother's dead. And this is what, and this is what dri drives her to go. Fuck that. I'm at least going to, I'm going to be the one to at least get something right. Like, yeah, I mean, turns the switch. The whole mutant conversation is going to be very interesting over the next couple of years as they figure out how to bring mutants into the MCU. Um, and I think people are very concerned about it. And and Mike and I really talked about it a whole lot, especially in the vein of Charles Xavier and Magneto and how the, you know, the Jewish community is very adamant that Magneto keeps his heritage of being a Holocaust survivor. And, you know, that was the big thing for him. While the other side of the community is like, make Magneto black. And everybody's like, well, no, we need, we don't have any kind of Jewish representation in, um, in the Marvel universe with the exception of Mark Spector and the Jewish mm -hmm. community is not pretty happy, not very happy about how that was handled. I'm not entirely sure why, but Mike and I were talking about this and I think that a great idea and again this isn't like my woke i'm half black half latino agenda coming out but magneto and charles xavier have always been the the shield and the sword you know mm. where charles xavier is like i want to protect and defend and work with or more so like the sword and the 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 hammer like he wants to build up and all the thing where magneto's like yo fuck these people <laughs> we're better than all of them and really a perfect allegory for that relationship is malcolm x and martin luther king jr right and you know where martin luther king jr could you know is is essentially the charles xavier or malcolm x is more of the magneto and with how the world is going and kind of that time period that could be incredible for oh, for sure for Fuck that yeah. to have that kind of you know um where you know magneto his turn of becoming a mutant is him being a kid at the race riots you know what i'm saying yeah you know and then he becomes radicalized and you know he's influenced by the black panther movement and all of that and i think that that would be a really great thing but you know i i, I think that this movie came too early is what I think. Hmm. Um, I think that there needed to be more mu like multiverse shenanigans, if you will, through <laughs> like TV shows or other uh, properties. Another season of Loki. Another season of Loki, another season of WandaVision. You know. I mean, they definitely rushed it. I mean, uh, I saw today that t only two days after the ending of shooting WandaVision was she in London shooting for this movie. Like there was no gap. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, that's gotta be, well, I mean, a, it's gotta be maybe easier to stay in that frame of mind, but like, we're even talking about an actor trying to jump mentally from where they ended that person and that character in that show 
to the OG o, o, OP fucking 100% dark hold person. So like it makes perfect sense why there's there's holes and I think, you know, we it felt rushed man. It just felt rushed. It it definitely felt yeah. disjointed. Um but at least the benefit is now we don't know. Do we know if Juan is dead? We see we see little uh, a little bit of magic that comes out at the bottom of that that if uh, she temple is when dead, she smashes it. I got but, a, I got even more of a problem with this movie, but she ain't dead. Yeah, they never don't kill a character on scene. If they're killed off scene, they're still alive, right? That's the yeah. rule. Plus, that little could have just been a spell to burn all the dark holds in all the universe, which in all universes, right, was what supposedly happened. Um, and then finally, we get that cut scene. Yeah, Mike, Mike agrees. She ain't dead. There's no way. I mean, Elizabeth Olsen has talked about, you know, being ready to come back uh and benedict you know he's he's ready to play dr strange for the next decade as far as he's concerned i mean i bet they're paying him at the yang so <laughs> she can teleport that's a fair point that's a fair point don't need a dark hold to do that um and, and so i mean like for me I, I think maybe this should just be treated as an encapsulated fanfare film with a little bit of spookiness right um instead of like just kind of like Doctor Strange, right? It was part of the universe, but it stood alone. This is yeah. kind of very similar. I think we just got a little bit of a uh, Sam Raimi, as I said earlier, put it something for all the fans, but they're just not going to like the way they get it, right? Uh, and I think the reason it was so close to No Way Home and WandaVision is just good timing. Filming in probably the same studios during a pandemic and all that stuff. I feel like there's there's reasons it was timelined this way. And maybe that just gives them a break from these characters and the magic side of things. So they can yeah. now go into the celestial path. There's one other thing I want to say, and you just brought it up was Dr. Strange one. The end of Dr. Strange one, Mordo takes the powers from um, the guy who always looks, who play the guy who played, uh, um, Sunday I know who you're talking about the guy who playing basketball, using magic to keep, to be able to walk. Right. Um. And Strange off ha- off handedly mentions to Mordo in the new universe that oh yeah you hate me and like you've been trying to kill me. When dog? When? Since when? None of that has happened. We don't. Yeah, we don't get we get none of that. Typically, at the at, at the end of Doctor Strange one. They kind of part ways, and he's like, I can't fuck with you, homie, because, like, you fucked with time. But, like, there's no, like, there's no, like, I will fucking kill you the next time I see you. Yeah, it's just an allusion to, like, events that never took place. That he's upset with him and all that. So, I mean, I don't know. It's, maybe yeah, you're maybe, right. maybe like I just need I just need to get over it, and this is like its own one thing. And like if they don't chat cast John Krasinski as Reed Richards in the regular MCU, I will fucking right. lose my mind. The only other right. thing that is what Mike said. Uh, we were talking about Pedro Pascal. It's like, what if Pedro Pascal was Reed Richards and like uh, Stephanie Beatriz was Sue Storm? Ooh. Sign me up. Ooh. Absolutely. I will absolutely <laughs> watch that. I mean, to be fair, was that interview I saw with Pedro Pascal there asking them like, you know, what's who do you think is the like the better dad, you or Oscar Isaacs? And he's like, well, Oscar is a dad. He's like, now daddy, daddy's a State energy. of mind. A state of mind. I'm your daddy, and I, all the duets from all these famous women are like. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Even me. So, Jesus. you know, what and I'm those saying? two are like this. I mean, they're like best friends. Like, yeah. you know, and uh, you could, dude, I mean, Pedro Pascal conv- or Oscar Isaac convinced Pedro Pascal to do the Mandalorian. Pedro Pascal call- compared Oscar Isaac to the the bald eagle Muppet because of his eyebrows. Yeah, and, and, and Oscar Isaac openly slapped him in the face. Shut up! Right. And they just kept giggling. Yeah. They're like they're 45, 50 year old, whatever their age is. I love just them both. toddlers. <laughs> just they don't know how to love each other without hit physical violence or goofing. Like it's just it's great. I don't know how that friendship came to be, but I'm I'm glad it did. It's definitely entertaining. Um, but no. For me, I, I I'm still on the 87 percent side of this movie. I enjoy. I just enjoyed it for what it was. If it was I'm gonna watch a, it again. Encapsulated, kind of scary version of Marvel. Um, 
the 75 percent people on the tomato meter i can see why they they feel the way they feel yeah. i definitely can see why you feel the way you feel because it's it's definitely a sad emotional movie it's dark it's brooding and it's not that's not usual for the mcu we're used to this upbeat kind of quips here and there um you know even when people do get choked out so it's the beginning at least it ends on a high, high positive note uh and, and instead we get one random mid mid credit scene where an eyeball pops out of his head that we get zero explanation on um just that oh but because he read from the book one time you gain an eye and then the next scene at the end we get clea showing up carving a nice big hole in the universe and she's saying you know you cause the incursion let's go and he goes okay great and like and that eye pops open again which that's fine i like charlie's welcome to the mcu um but yeah it was like little to be explained again it's like again we're supposed to understand and if, if i hadn't just read the death of dr strange you wouldn't have I would, no I idea that was. half that shit so i try, uh, try giving it a read and then and then go sing it again Maybe yeah i think that's different. a good idea i definitely will i um yeah, I had something in my mind and I totally forgot what I was going to say. But yeah, I think that. Yeah, I'm sure, Mike. I, I think you're right. Absolutely. John Krasinski has said multiple times that he wants to be in the MCU. And the, and you know, casting him as Reed Richards is a no brainer. I would love it if they cat, like if they still kept that he was an older Reed Richards and we didn't have to go, like they gave him the Spider Man treatment where like mm -hmm. we don't have to go through the origin story of the Fantastic Four because we've done it yeah. in a few other movies. Um, yeah, I, I would prefer that version. Yeah, where, where we, like where we, we get it. Like, yeah. However, like the the one thing that is interesting that I, I, I'm interested in how they're going to address it is like, where the fuck has Reed Richards been? <laughs> like, yeah, evidently in space since like whatever that one the, Yeah, one of the was. people said like it is the 60s Fantastic Four and like there's like some wired wonky time shit going on and they <laughs> come back to is. earth and they're the same age but yeah then who bought stark tower is it doom or King it's got to be the baxter building i'm sure it is <laughs> i do love that in moon Knight we get a little bit of von doom boxes in like the yeah. delivery van so that's i'm glad that that's being peaked at mm -hmm. uh but but i digress i think What's the guy from Peaky Blinders? Uh, the main character, Kalen, Killian. Murphy. That's it, Killian Murphy. People are like fan casting him as Doom. I'd be okay with that. I would be okay like, with that. Yeah. He he would be a great Doom. Yeah. Um, if Mads Mikkelsen hadn't played fucking uh, Kaecilius, Mads Mikkelsen would be my pure choice right? for Doom. I, I'm, I bet he's tired of being the bad guy though. But at the same time, he's like, I'm getting paid. Maybe he's so maybe good at it. <laughs> um. And then finally, I'll read this last comment and then we can start wrapping it up. The problem we are going to have is that he who remains pruned all timelines with Reed Richards. So where are they going to come from? Ooh, girl. Maybe now they're not pruned because they're all out there, right? They were pruned, now they're unpruned. Yeah. I guess a timeline and a dimension is not the same thing. A timeline and a universe. Like they're not, inter like, I don't know. True. Maybe universities we'll have different timelines, right? Um, but anyway, I think the movie was fine. Yeah, we have our qualms, we have we have our our critiques, but man, that was so much in a week. And I I didn't get on the internet. I'm glad to be be free of of the uh, fear of spoilers. It, it sucks that I think you and Mike uh, got spoiled. Reed Richards uh, got spoiled for me. Yeah, and Mike too. I can't believe that Black Bolt. Poor Black Bolt. Yeah. Uh, you deserve more, but he got you got got some. Um, but ne next week, or so here's a new cadence, by the way, for those of you who survived and ne yet another long show. I'm sorry, there was just two big things we had to talk about this week. Next time it'll be some smaller, one topic, maybe a little bit something at the beginning, a little segment, and we'll re keep rolling through these. Try to keep it under an hour. Uh, this now we're going to start doing this either bi weekly or tri weekly, really when there's something big to talk about, when we have something to really sink our teeth into. Because, again, the goal is not to be your weekly news report of all the headlines of bs uh, but really to kind of give you reviews of games or TV shows, movies, things that you know we can actually talk about. We do want to even – we're also thinking about coming back and doing a little bit of streaming uh, whenever that presents itself. Right now, I think we're all just a little bit busy. As Dominic announced at the beginning of the show, he quit his job. He's looking for that next one. I'm trying to move into this house. 
Yeah. Uh, it's going to be a fun summer. We got a lot of things coming up. We got Obi Wan in like three weeks, so that's probably what we'll be back for. Top next. Gun Two, same week Top. as Obi Wan. <laughs> Top Gun Two already is it already out? It it comes out, out like? the same week as Obi Wan. Oh no shit. Uh, so yeah, I mean, there's there's stuff that we can we're going to pull up it on on this show, and, and honestly, I think for that week we're going to have to do two episodes, man. One one for Top Gun, one for oh yeah, yeah. one for Obi Wan. They're going to need their own time, but um, but I appreciate everybody stuck around. That's the end of our spoilers. I'm going to take that spoiler banner off. I'm going to go ahead and show the other one that everybody likes. Like, comment, subscribe. Remember to click that bell, get notifications whenever we are going live. We're also going to start doing these earlier in the week and releasing them later. So we can join you in the comments and actually add information to what we're saying instead of just filling dead air and waiting for Mike. Thank you, regardless, Mike, for filling in those gaps of knowledge in the comment section. Uh, hey, Sean, shout out to being in the chat today. Appreciate it, you as always. Yep. Uh, and as always, thanks everybody. Appreciate it. It's been a great week. Dom, as always, later, mate. Peace.